the Fine Arts Center Theater Company, a division of the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center at Colorado College, proudly presents Of Spacious Skies, an audio play series. This week, Episode 5, To Slay the Dragon, a parable by Mickey Burdick. In Colorado Springs, there was once a neighborhood known as the Conejos District, which held a small playground featuring a dragon sculpture. The dragon loved the city, and the kids all came to play with it. It was a kind, reasonable dragon. But one day, a knight in yellow gold armor showed up on horseback to slay the dragon. Había una vez, once upon a time, at the foot of a majestic mountain, there was a great city, a city of champions. And in the middle of the great city, there lived a mighty dragon. Is there anything better in this world than looking up at the mountains and listening to the children play as the wind skitters across one's scales? I think not. And while the dragon loved the city, the city for its part was largely indifferent towards the dragon. But those few who truly knew and understood the dragon were quite fond of the creature. A dragon has its uses, after all. Hello, dragon. Marco! I didn't see you there. Sorry. It's okay, right? If I stay down here between your legs? Por supuesto. And why are we whispering? I'm hiding. I see. I will do my best to help. Whom are we hiding from? Chantel. She's the seeker now. I'm a hider. Chantel is a fierce seeker. You chose well to hide with me. There she goes, by the swings. <laughs> she got Luke under the picnic table. He hides there every time. Luke's the worst. No child is the worst, child. For indeed, the dragon loved all the children, and the children loved her in return. You must hide again. Luke is seeking. I just want to stay with you. You're a child. You should go play. Won't you get bored? Nothing makes me happier than seeing you play. Okay, I'm gonna go. And all was well for the dragon that lived in the city at the foot of the mountain. But one day, everything changed. Hear ye, hear ye, I am Sir Tobias, and the city has chosen me, Sir Tobias, as its champion, to embark on this, the greatest of endeavors. I have come to slay the dragon. So, if there are any dragons here, step forward now. Sir Tobias commands you. Just come on forward. To what end? To, well, I was just saying, for the slaying and all that. Hey, what's going on? This man has come to slay the dragon. (laughs) Okay. Good luck. I do not need luck. I am Sir Tobias, and my path has been ordained. Cool horse. Can I touch it? No. Can I touch your sword? No. Your armor? No, stop it. For a knight, you're not very much fun. You have a smart mouth, son. And what's worse, your friend here looks suspiciously like a dragon to me. Tal vez. Tal vez no. Marco, who's this guy? Toby. Sir Tobias. He wants to slay the dragon. (laughs) That's dumb. Nuh uh. Ooh, cool horse. Can I touch it? No. Can I touch your sword? No. Can I? No, no, no! You kids cannot touch anything. Why are you wearing that metal outfit? Young lady, this armor was forged of the strongest steel available to man. Quenched in elven tears and tempered in the very depths of Nye's abyss. My master smith worked for eight months on the breastplate alone. Yeah, but it's hot out. The heat does not bother me. I am not so easily ruffled. Well, you look stupid. You're stupid! Tank tops are stupid! (laughs) So, once you slay our dragon, what next? What next? Why... We quarter the beast. We cut him up into four parts, and then we quarter those again and scatter them to the far corners of the city. What else would one do with a dragon? All sorts of stuff. Talk to it. Climb on top of it and see the whole neighborhood. Tell it stories. 
Make it tell you stories back? Hide under its legs when the seeker comes. I don't follow. You wouldn't. <laughs> to you, madame. <laughs> Why don't you leave us alone? I am the champion. Why are you being so mean to me? Marco, it's okay. I am the dragon you seek. Aha! I knew it, that scaly skin and sunken brow. I have a keen eye for your type. Prepare ye, beast, to do battle? I do not wish to battle. You have no choice. <sighs> Children, get back. I should stand for this. Oh, oh, I see. You're quite large. Well, it's a dragon, so... Puts me at a bit of a disadvantage, don't you think? You got that shiny sword. It is very shiny, thank you. Let it be known, I have the shiniest sword in all the land. <laughs> Dragon? Maybe we won't fight just now. As they say, discretion is the better part of valor. I will spare you for another day. You're welcome. But upon the morrow, I shall return with a second, and then we fight. And so the dragon waited. Marco sat with her as night drew on. I'll come tomorrow after school. Maybe Chandel will come too. <laughs> that girl is feroz. You are both very brave to stand with me today. Thank you. The dragon slept little that night. Thoughts of her neighborhood roiling in her mind. Memories of children grown and gone. Images of waste and neglect. But eventually, day broke, banishing dark thoughts. After school, as promised, her friend returned. Chantel's gonna be late. Detention. Boy, she said some things to Mr. Brand in social studies. I didn't know what half of it even meant. That Toby guy come back yet? No, but soon. I can't wait. I'd like to just see him try to slay you. No, you wouldn't. War is not a pretty thing. But I want to see you do fire breath. Lo siento. I'm not that kind of dragon. Oh, man. Marco, come away. You should go. The puppy's calling. I can fight. No, go. Now. I could not bear to see you hurt. Run along, boy. For I, Sir Tobias, am here to free you from this accursed demon's reign. Marcosa. No, you are. Hello, dragon. I see you've brought help. Verily. Sir Maelstro of the East is here as my second. Dragon? Along with two pages and a whole order of esquires. Gentlemen, are you sure we cannot simply talk to one another? Oh, no. Once the esquires become involved, things tend to bog down. You know how they can be. They would prattle on for days, bury us both under a mound of paperwork. But in the end, the problem would still exist. And that is? You, of course. You are a blight on this great city. Your breath is a blight. Chantel's here. Ugh, that girl's a horrid. Hey, careful, knight. In any case, we need this land. What was on this land before I arrived? Maelstro? Let's see. Um... Looks like there was a great coyote that lived here. Seems we had him quartered as well. Uh, quartered again. Yada, yada, yada. Winds of change. Body scattered to the far corners. And uh, so on. The usual. Why did you hate the coyote? Hate? Oh, we liked the coyote well enough. Just not right here, you see. I do not. Where will the children play when I'm gone? I don't know. Children are resourceful. Listen, are we going to do battle or not? Because it's very hot in this armor. Ha ha! Hold you. He's 
Shoraro. I do not wish to fight, but I will. Sir Maelstro, charge the beast. Charge! I didn't want to do it, but he was trying to quarter me. You see? It's a violent, unremorseful beast. This... this is precisely why it must perish. Tomorrow, thou creature, we shall return again. It's going to be a lot of paperwork over poor Maelstro. Once again, evening came and went and the dragon still could not sleep. Very early the next morning, Marco arrived. Are you very afraid for today? See, si. I wish you could hide beneath my legs this time. I would protect you. You're a good kid, Marco. We'll be helping, though. Dad and Theo Mike are making signs. Chantel said she and her mom will come out for the battle, too. If Chantel's mother is half as fierce as she, the knights will have a difficult time indeed. The whole of La Familia Grande will be here for you. You should go. Be strong. Of course. Soy Dragon. Hail to thee, dragon. It's a beautiful day, no? A little hot, but I brought twelve of the finest men the city could muster. Countless esquires and war machines enough to fill a city block. The winds of change blow in my favor, and your demise shall be... What's with all the war machines? Get out of the road! Sorry, you'll have to go around. We're having a battle today. Move them horses. You're blocking the whole road, man. Take Mill over to Sierra Madre. There should have been signs. We're having a battle. Idiot. Sorry. I thought the Esquires had taken care of the permits. Where was I? Winds of change. The beast's demise. Right. It's inevitable. You understand me? I do. But it is you who does not want to understand me. I scare you not because of my actions, but because you cannot fathom a creature so profoundly different than yourself. I've read books about dragons. Two books. Then you should know. I know all I care to know. That says much. I'm ready to have this done. And with that, the great battle commenced. It was a grueling affair, lasting long into the day. The dragon fought valiantly. The entire neighborhood came out for the fight. Marco and his teals, Chantal and her mother, even Luke, who was terrible at hiding, made himself seen. The people fought alongside their beloved dragon striking at knights and undermining monstrous war machines wherever they could, while the stoic esquires kept chronicle of each and every blow. The battle raged on, until finally... <laughs> the beast was slain. I'm sorry, friend. The dragon was quartered, then quartered again, and scattered throughout the city. Parts of her were moved to lands beyond the city, out of sight of the mountain. But she did not die. Not really. I was transmuted. You will live with me, in my memory. And in my stories. Like the coyote before her, each part of the dragon took root somewhere else. All the little bits grew down into the land and up into the trees. And the children came to her there, taking shelter under her branches, swinging from the stout limbs, weary backs leaning against thick trunks. 
The dragon looked on from a multitude of new perspectives, watching as the world around her changed. Some changes were for the better, others for the worse. It is inevitable. We change the air just by breathing it in. We feel the wind in our leaves and bend to it. But we do not break. Remember that. Recuerdo. I remember. remember.